Good evening, welcome to tomorrow's tropics for the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. Uh, please note, I'm not a meteorologist, and this uh, forecast is just a collection of my very own opinions and mine only, and is not official in any way. And also, given how it's only uh, um, or it's only May, there's still some uncertainty around, and please do not take this as gospel, because uh, there are things that can and will change from this point forward. So, it's only one more month until hurricane season, and so it's uh, time for me to make another hurricane season forecast. Uh, we have definitely have had some uh, changes in the past month. For, let's start off with Enso here. We're um, getting into neutral now after some westerly wind bursts. And uh, so it, it, we're, uh, we're at a La Nina now, we're pretty much at our, and now we're in some uncertainty, as is the usual for this time of year, uh, as to what happens next. Uh, there tends to be double dip La Ninas uh, after a couple of years of El Nino like we've had. However, that's not a sure thing, and uh, that, and while it is possible, so far, it seems that uh, generally staying around neutral for now is more likely rather than going back to La Nina so soon. Uh, so what's happening? Under the ocean, we have this downrolling Kelvin wave that is a piece that a piece of it broke off and is trying to surface in the eastern Pacific. And that was from some westerly wind burst activity that occurred in the past couple of months. And uh, another kind of way to view this is right here. So uh, the real question is, what's next? Do we get more of that kind of activity and push towards El Nino? Or do we kind of stagnate and stay around neutral or even uh, go back to La Nina? So the key to that is this next little thing here. The next, uh, is that a downwall in Kelvin wave? And if so, how strong is it? Is it? just weak and kind of stagnates things, or does it provide another push into, say, more neutral and closer to a more positive ENSO state? Uh, it's hard to tell, but we do know that it's running out of time because the westerly wind activity that we've got currently going on it will be replaced by the usual easterlies uh, and stronger easterlies, which isn't really a surprise as we're still on the cool side of neutral. Uh, but I think by mid-May or so, we'll have a, lot, a much better idea of what is going on and what kind of ENSO state we'll have in uh, or towards the hurricane season and whether El Nino or something like that will become a uh, an issue for the Atlantic through the um, outflow of tropical cyclones and general convection causing shear. Another thing uh, to look for is the West African monsoon, which, if it's strong as it seems to have been lately, that means uh, it tends to warm up the Atlantic and also disrupt uh, developing El Ninos, such as in 2018 and 2019. So uh, we shall see what happens, but uh, I just caution uh, any uh, very confident forecasts and uh, for, for just uh, just for me, or in my eyes, we're probably uh, going to stay around neutral, maybe cool neutral, warm neutral, but I'm uh, going to go with the middle of the road for now, just given the uncertainty in the, at the moment. Another thing that kind of su uh, supports my idea that uh, just uh, that we're going to stay around neutral and stay the course is that um, the model forecast that uh, or in April, generally did not go that um, have an extreme kind of lean. Uh, it's a little on the cool side of neutral, but you see there's only three of these models in the uh, August, September, October tri-monthly during peak hurricane season that actually had El Nino and another three that had uh, La Nina, only two of which were clearly in that uh, area. But you can see the ma uh, vast majority for Basically, uh, this entire time is just in neutral, and so it does seem that we'll get a generally neutral or uh, not strong, and so at least during the peak hurricane season, 
which uh, definitely could help the Atlantic, especially given the the streak of active seasons, and without um, without any kind of an El Nino, uh, it's probably going to just continue uh, because of favorable uh, intra basin conditions. Speaking of these conditions, let's first take a look at the sea surface temperatures, and uh, there's actually a lot of warmth right north of the tropics, uh, and it's in a very long band with uh, minima actually in the tropics. So if I was looking at this in August, August or September, I'd think, okay, there isn't too much that's going to happen in the tropics. It'll be a lot more suppressed than usual uh, with more activity happening here, but it's, it's only May 1st, and we don't really talk about those uh, deep tropical cyclones in this area until uh, usually July or August. So wh uh, what ends up happening instead? Well, there is still low pressure that spawned uh, in general because of the um, atmosphere coupling to the warm water. And what does that mean? Well, that means you have uh, generally reduced trade winds, uh, especially if you have uh, uh, warm air, air of water out here. And so with uh, weakened trade winds from lower pressures, that means you tend to have uh, this area warming in spring if you have a springtime uh, area of warm water like this. Uh, we had something similar to this actually last year, and it did end up warming uh, in the tropics, so we'll have to see if that repeats or not. Uh, and I'm not trying to make an analog to last season, but we could have something similar in terms of just looking at sea surface temperature anomalies alone. Now, what have the atmospheric conditions the last little while been like? Well, you can see it's a negative North Atlantic oscillation. That's kind of helped weaken the trade winds, uh, uh, especially recently. But if you average it back to March 1st, you can see this very big ridge of high pressure that's usual. And this area of low pressure, but it's a bit uh, further north than uh, th than it should or would be to uh, weaken trade winds. Instead, you have that happening in that subtropical belt. And so there hasn't actually been... Uh, very weak trade winds in general over the past little while. They have weakened recently, as I said, but in this averaged area, the only area, uh, or average time, the only area with those um, persistently weak trade winds are basically where we've been seeing it almost every year, and that's near Africa, uh, which suggests an active and strong uh, West African monsoon again, but you can see otherwise trade winds are uh, relatively strong, and that has been uh, probably one of the reasons why we haven't really seen a whole lot of warming here. But uh, given the monsoon onset is soon, which will uh, really crank up this w uh, weak trade winds here, and uh, this warm water here which tends to move south or is correlated with uh, moving south. If it's like this, uh, we'll probably see some sort of warming, uh, in my opinion. Now, it's like that the uh, velocity potential anomaly you can see here, as usual, uh, Africa has an almost rising air. That is also another signal of uh, an active monsoon to come. Uh, you can see the uh, decidedly less La Nina like uh, atmospheric condition here. Where you have the rising air not quite uh, not quite clearly over the West Pacific like it is in El Nino, but not quite over the Indo-Pacific warm pool here like it is in El Nino. So uh, it is kind of a good way to sum up the more neutral and so atmospheric conditions that we've been seeing. Uh, and the main point here is uh, we have a rising air over Africa, which does uh, suggest an active uh, West African monsoon. And looking at a couple of other factors too, we can see some uh, supporting uh, information to that and why I believe we will have um, uh, another strong African monsoon. So uh, another thing to look at is the precipital water anomaly, 
So positive values here mean there's more water in the column above a certain area. And basically that means the air is moister and uh, here that means more convection uh, for tropical waves. And once they get off of Africa, that means more moisture for a tropical cyclone to form. So uh, basically, again, like the velocity potential signal, we've, uh, oh, we've seen something like this uh, basically every year in the you know, past five or so years, and it uh, doesn't seem to be changing. So uh, it does look like we'll have enhanced tropical waves coming off of uh, into more favorable than usual environment. Uh, some more supporting information here is the 700 millibar zonal wind anomaly. So 700 uh, millibars is what that level where the uh, tropical waves tend to be the strongest, at, at least when they come off of uh, Africa. And so uh, a, a cyclonic kind of flow in that area at that level would tend to uh, suggest that you'd have uh, them organizing and spinning up more quickly and becoming tropical cyclones pretty soon. And that is indeed true because those more active seasons, uh, you do tend to have westerlies down, uh, down south here and easterlies up north. Uh, and that obviously means that you have lower pressure here and more cyclonic flow, so it is a more favorable environment for tropical waves to get going. And if we uh, do a seasonal correlation to that peak season hurricane activity and the winds in uh, March and April, which we uh, have right here from beginning of March to roughly the end of April, you can see there's a decent correlation of those westerly winds to the south and easterly winds to the north. It makes sense because the cyclonic flow. So uh, that kind of bins 2021 into seemingly more likely to be active uh, based on that. We'll have to see if this is overkill or something because if you remember 2020, or remember 20, 2020, uh, the monsoonal flow was so strong that uh, wait, a bunch of waves in the peak season couldn't even really get going that far uh, far west. It got they all kind of got stuck in the uh, eastern Atlantic, and then you'd have another wave come from behind or something and interact with that, and you ended up getting a messy, disorganized monsoonal type uh, uh, gyre, and so that kind of meant that you didn't have those long tracking tropical cyclones. Instead, you had ones that. Uh, could get strong, but usually they waited until, until they were in the Caribbean or uh, in that general area east or west of uh, 60 degrees west. And that meant a lot of a lot more land impacts, but also a lot more short-lived storms. And uh, for the ludicrous amount of tropical uh, storms that were in 2020, relatively low uh, accumulated cyclone energy. So it does seem that we'll have a strong uh, African monsoon to support uh, warming of the Atlantic, uh, kind of uh, keep El, El Nino chances from getting too high and uh, support tropical waves as they come off of Africa, but we'll have to see if it is too strong like it was last year. And in general, that uh, favors an above average season, but because it is early, uh, you don't want to go too confident or too high or too extreme with your forecast. And what I will be doing for uh, this forecast is uh, 60 to 19 named storms, 8 to 11 hurricanes, uh, 3 to ma 5 major hurricanes with 120 to 160 accumulated cyclone energy points, which is a solidly above average season in uh, in my opinion, makes sense given the uh, uh, relatively uh, favorable slate of conditions that seem to be coming on so far. Uh, I will be back at the beginning of hurricane season, June 1st, to make my next forecast, and we'll see how conditions look then and which way I might have to adjust my numbers. Yeah. However, no matter what happens, even if it's an inactive or active season, 
Uh, it just takes one hurricane uh, or bad storm to make it a bad season in your area. And since it's May 1st, or only a month away, it's probably a good time to start preparing for the hurricane season if you're in a hurricane-prone area, just to be safe. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments about my forecast, please let me know. Thanks for watching.